Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Hour. I am Juwan Clark, your superintendent. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. You out there in Facebook, Cyber Sanctuary, YouTube, welcome, welcome. Let us pray. Father God, we are calling upon your most holy, most magnificent name this morning, giving thanks to you for last night's rest, Father. This morning, waking up, Lord God, thank you for a sound mind, health and strength in our body, Father God. Thank you for food and shelter and all the provisions that you provide for us daily, Lord. You make sure that we have our daily bread, and we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for Jesus Christ and the sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, who rests, rules, and abides with us. Thank you, Lord God. And, Lord God, we thank you for our families. Continue to strengthen us. Continue to lead and guide us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you allowed us to get into our automobiles and travel across the dangerous highways, Father. And you let no hurt, harm, or danger come to us. And we thank you. And, Lord, th those who are on their way to Sunday school this morning, be with them, Lord. Lead and guide them, Father, as they get here. Lord, we thank you for Mount Calvary as a whole. And we thank you for Mount Calvary individually lord god individually father god bless our pastor and our leading lady continue to strengthen and lead and guide them as they lead and guide us father lord god we just thank you for just being you lord god and if we had ten thousand tongues we could not thank you enough lord we ask you to allow this sunday school to be all that you would have it to be bless all our leaders all over the land lord god continue to strengthen them continue to lead and guide them father god and lord god as we go and teach this lesson this morning pour into our facilitator all that she needs to catechize this lesson this morning let the holy spirit rest rule and abide with her bring to her remembrance all that you have told her and taught her through studying of this word lord god in the name of jesus father god we give thanks to you on this day in jesus name amen God promises to guide. God promises to guide us this morning is the title of our lesson. Our uh, printed text is coming from Isaiah chapter 48, verses through through 8a and verse 17. And our key text this morning is, it reads as follows, Thus saith the Lord, thou Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that, that thou shouldest go. And that's coming from Isaiah 48, verse 17. This morning, we have two outlines this morning. Our first outline is entitled, The Knowing God. The Knowing God. Our second outline, The Living God the living God. And I am going to bring our um, facilitator here, uh, you out there in Facebook, Cyber Sanctuary, YouTube, get your Sunday school lesson uh, material together and follow along with us as we catechize this lesson. And again, our lesson is coming from Isaiah 48, verses 3 through 8a and verse 17. And our facilitator this morning is Minister Sister Janine Miles, and she will be coming to us shortly. Amen? Thank you, Sister Clark, for the introduction and opening us up this morning for Sunday School. She has already told us what our two outlines are for today, God's promises to God. I will read the scripture. It is coming from Isaiah chapter 48, verses 3 through 8a and verse 17. If you have your Bible, please turn to Isaiah chapter 48, 3 through 8a and verse 17. I'm reading from the King James Version, I believe. That's what our book is. I have decided the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth. And I showed them, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art 
continent, and thou neck is an iron shewer, and thou bow brass. I have even from the beginning declared to thee, before it came to pass, I showed it thee, lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image and my molten image have commanded them. Thou hast heard, see all of this, and will not ye declare. I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou doest not know them. They were created now and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou hearest not, yea, thou knowest not. Yea, from that time thine ear was not open. For I knew that thou wouldest deal Um, I'm sorry, very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. Thus said the Lord, thou Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thou God, which teaches thee the prophets, which leadeth thee by the way thou shouldest go. Amen. That's the scripture reading for today. I'm going to read from the, um, the New International Ver Qu Version quickly, which is a little easier for me to understand and maybe for you to understand too. Amen. I foretold the former things long ago. My mouth announced them and I made them known. Then suddenly I acted and they came to pass. For I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron. Your forehead was brass. Therefore I told you these things long ago before they happened. I announced them to you so that you could not say my images brought them about. My wooden image and metal God ordained them. You have heard these things. Look at them all. Will you not admit them? From now on, I will tell you of new things, of hidden things unknown to you. They are created now and not long ago. You have not heard of them before today. So you cannot say, yes, I knew them. You have neither heard nor understood from of old your ears have not opened, have not been opened. Verse 17. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way that you should go. Amen. I title oh God promises to guide. I'm going to read a short introduction this morning about Isaiah I always think it's important for us to understand the context and the setting of the, of the scripture before we begin. The book of Isaiah is the first of the prophetic books in the Bible. The major message throughout the Bible is that humanity falls into continuous rebellion against the holy God and will be judged for their sin. This book swings back and forth between messages of judgment and visions of future redemption. Isaiah's prophecy is addressed to people living in three different time periods. Chapters 1 through 39 condemn the 8th century Israelites for their idolatrous and immortal lifestyle. The judgment for their sin was that the Assyrians would evade. The next chapter, uh, um, the next section, chapters 40 through 55, is addressed to the Jews living in exile in Babylon, a, in, a generation that lives two centuries after Isaiah. These chapters offer comfort to discouraged exiles who fear that God deserted them. Isaiah told them that their captivity was the Lord's discipline and that one day they will return to Jerusalem if they only trust to God. And chapters 50 through 66 is addressed to the Jews who have already returned to the land but before the temple was rebuilt. Amen. I had to go back with this lesson and begin at verse 1 because it kind of sets the, the tone for chapter 48 in Isaiah. And I'm going to read those two scriptures quickly for you. It opens up with God's statement to his people, his beloved people, the ones who he loved. It says, listen to this, O house of Jacob, 
you who are called by the name of Israel and come out of the line of Judah, you who take oaths in the name of the Lord and invoke the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness, you who call yourself citizens of the holy city and rely on the God of Israel, the God Almighty is his name. Um, when we look at these two verses, um, God is identifying his people, the house of Jacob, who comes out of the loins of Abraham. And, and to be called Jacob, you know, in the Old Testament, I think I taught that lesson before, Jacob is a deceiver and a cheater. I don't know about you, but these words were kind of harsh for his people uh, to hear. Um, He's kind of like, you know, you, you say you love me, you say you go by my name, but there's no evidence of, of you obeying what I tell you to do. And, and you know, and, and so God was upset with, with Israel, with their disobedient and their idolatrous worship that they continue to have. In other words, you know, I might call them a hypocrite. You know, their, their, their lips were, they honored me with their lips, but their hearts were Far from me. Israel was known in, in many other nations as a powerful people. They knew that God had their back. However, so many times God's people turned their back on him. And they continued to want to follow after other nations. And eventually they would begin to worship like the other nations. And, and I'm telling you, it made God upset. You call yourself the house of Jacob the house of Israel, but you say a whole lot with your mouth, but your actions are not saying who you really are. Don't we know some people like that? People, you know, (laughs) you you go to the club. I'm not saying I go to the club, but you you might want to go or somebody goes, and you see one of your church members there. You're like, oh, I thought you. Or like my dad used to tell me uh, when I was growing up and I want to do something that everybody in the neighborhood was doing, you know, Dad, I want to go to the, no, no. He said, you're not going, you're a Christian. You are different from them. You are separated from them. You are not going. I used to be so upset. I didn't know why God, why my dad wanted me to be separated from them. He didn't want me to do what they were doing. And it's the same thing with God. God did not want his people to do what everybody in the world was doing. However, they got with those foreign ladies and, and you know, married foreign women. God told them not to do that. But they did it anyway. Eventually, those ladies uh, turned their back, turned those people's eyes away from God. So we see that um, God has always loved his people, and he's always cared about them, and he's always came to see about them. In, in Judges, I remember in Judges, when uh, God would, when, when the people got in trouble, God would go and get them. Every time they call out and cry, oh, God, him, he sends a judge. And they walk right according to the law when the judge was always in front of them. But when the judge died, they turned back to their idolatrous ways. So God is saying, hey, you tell me you love me. The Bible says, if you love me, obey me. Amen. So verse 3, I foretold the former things long ago. My mouth announced them, and I made them known. Then suddenly I acted, and they came to pass. God says so many times to his people, I have guided you. I've shown you what to do. I sent Moses um, years. I sent Moses to deliver you out of the hands of the enemy. I have sent judges to guide you and direct you. I've sent my word. I send the commandments to you. But guess what? You still don't listen to me. This lesson got all over me. I mean, when I think about how good God is to us, how the Israelites knew who God was, how he how he loved them so much, and they still was a world disobedient to him. My, my, my. And he did show himself strong to them. He said, you, you keep on doing this, guess what? I'm going to have to show you who the boss is. And he did. You said, he did. He showed them who the boss was. And this is knowing God. We know God. Do we know him just in words, or do we know his character? Do we spend time with him? To know somebody, you got to be kind. You got to be intimate with them. You see what I'm saying? I, I can, hey, how you doing? But to really know him, you got to spend time with them. They spent time with God, and they still turned their back on him. They still made uh, wooden images and graven images. They still were on the mountain.
mountain when Moses was, in the, was up there um, getting the Ten Commandments. God told him what to do. But as my, my, my spouse says, they were wayward people. So God has shown them his power and his greatness, but they still want to do what they want to do. If I thought about myself as a child, how um, my, my parents would tell me what to do. I didn't hear them. That, so this lesson is about hearing and obey. Do we hear what God tells us to do? Do we hear his word to obey his word? Or are we, are we just listening? Uh, no, do we hear it or are we listening? Because if we listen, then we would apply it to our lives. While we're waiting on the microphone, there we go. While we wait on the microphone, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. These are some of the former things that he told him, uh, told the Israelites long ago um, when he bought them uh, from the hands of the enemy. Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse 3 through 8 reads, You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the youth and the youth of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneeling trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you go in, blessed when you come out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you in one direction, but flee from the other. The Lord will send blessings on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving to you. That's what he told them in Deuteronomy. But he also said in the same chapter, uh, verse 15, However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all of his commandments and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. God told his people what he expected out of them. And he said, if I said it, it's going to happen. If I said it, it's going to come to pass. And that was in Deuteronomy. Second Chronicles 36, 15 through 17 reads, I'm just trying to build my little, not build a case, but I'm trying to show us where God has already told us before what is expected of us. So we can't act like we don't know who God is. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Say to the Lord, Lord, keep me in the valley. Mm. Keep me mm. low. Keep me humble, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we'll get a big head if we don't, you know, stay prayed up and, 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 and continue to study God's word mm -hmm. and apply to our lives. Mm -hmm. We'll get the big head mm -hmm. and forget why all these blessings has happened in the first place. He said, he said your bonds will be, be filled. filed. <laughs> your crops will be plentiful. That's right. His is promises, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. God's promises mm -hmm. are conditional. That's right. Mm -hmm. His promises are conditional in such mm -hmm. a way that if we walk upright, no, no good, good thing. thing. That's but right. the thing, the key word is mm -hmm. if we upright. walk upright. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Clark, for those comments. Uh, in the next verse, he says, For I knew how stubborn you were, your neck muscles were iron, your forehead was brown, bronze. 
In other words, I know how hard-headed you are. <laughs> I keep telling you over and over and over again what to do. When you decide in your heart, you're going to do something else different. I, this, this lesson hit me this week because, uh, because of how merciful our God is, first of all. Regardless of what we do in our lives, we have a redeemer, and the redeemer lives today. Um, we have a redeemer, and the redeemer lives today. But he says, you're hard-headed. You don't listen to nothing I tell you. Hard-headed. Hard-headed. Let's go to Judges chapter 2, verses 16 through 19. Time and time and time again, God would send prophets their way to tell them what to do, how to live, how to conquer the land, but the Israelites, not every time, but most of the time, did not follow anything anybody told them to do. They get themselves in trouble. They do the wrong thing. They cry out, and here comes God, my Lord. What a, ooh, I don't know nobody else love me like that. I'm, I, ooh, go to <laughs> Judges chapter 2, <laughs> 16 through 19. God saved them every time out of their rebellion. But I want you to know that you're going to pay. You're going to pay for their disobedience. You know, I know sometimes we run around here and think we big and bad enough like Sister Clark do what we want to do. We're going to pay for that. Sooner or later, we're going to have to pay for what we've done according to the word of God. It was we followed the word or we did not. So it's nevertheless the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoil them. And yet they would not hearken unto the judges, for they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord they did not so. Whew. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge for it repented the Lord because of their growing by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them the last verse 19 and it came to pass when the judge was dead they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they cease not from their own doing, nor from their stubborn ways. Amen. This, mm, uh, I look at our nation now. I look at where we are. And we got to get it together. The church of God has got to get it together. Or we're going to be handed over to the hands of the enemy. God has forewarned us. He's told us through his word. He tells us through our preaching. He tells through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost tells us. But we continue and continue to disobey God. And one day we're going to have to. But God is going to guide you through all of that too. What a merciful God we have. He's going to guide us through that too. You hear me? He gonna get, when we're getting whipped upside the head, he's going to guide us through that too and bring us on out. My Lord, I'm trying to ho hold myself up here together. Acts 7, 51 says, you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised heart and ears, you just like your fathers. That's in Acts. You just like your fathers. I told them what to do. They didn't listen to me either. So guess what? You don't listen either. Don't, don't we have our world like that now? We taught our kids. I taught my kids. My dad taught me. But did I always do what he told me to do? No. Did I always obey the, the word of God? No. And I paid for it. I paid for it. But one thing I learned from this lesson is that if, when God even disciplines us, he sends a comforting word the same time. He don't leave us out there by ourselves. Because I'm telling you, there's been some times that I've been there. But he sent somebody along the way every now and then to say, hey, remember who you are. Remember you're a child of the king. Remember that your redeemer lives. So uh, knowing God, we, we know him, but we have to follow his word. And, and, 
And because they were hard-headed, they got in trouble for that. God told them, I'm going to give you the land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to give you what you need, what you want, but you got to follow me. And if you don't follow me, there are going to be some consequences. Amen. Verse 5, therefore, I told you these things long ago before they happened. I announced them to you so that you could not say, I didn't know. Well, I didn't, I didn't know. I, God, go, I didn't know God go, could do that. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to do that. You know, they always say, once you hear the word, you're accountable. I don't, I don't know if there's a scripture for that. Somebody can maybe find it for me. But they said, once you hear the word, you are accountable for what you hear. So once we know who God is, we're accountable for that word. He told us that uh, love the Lord thy God with all the heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. That's what he wants us to do. Have no other God before me. That's what he said. But the house of Jacob, the Israelites, thought that these golden images or the idol gods of the other nations would do more for them than their own father. So they went a hoeing after other gods. As the scripture said, I'm, you know, went to seeking after other gods. They thought that their God would be better than their father, but there were so many instances in the Bible where God showed them <laughs> that those images would do nothing for them. It would do nothing for them. Amen. Isaiah 44, 9 through 11 says, All who make idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are arrogant to their own shame. Who shapes a god and casts an idol? Who can profit? Nothing. People who do that will be put to shame. Shall craftsmen only, such craftsmen, are only human beings. Let them all come together and take their stand. They will be bowed down to terror and shame. What a powerful God we serve. In the world where idolatry is everywhere. Uh, it's everywhere. We Sometimes I don't think we realize that we put other things before God. We really, we really believe in our heart that that God is first in our lives. But sometimes if we don't take a self-examination of our lives and ourselves, we won't realize that I need to make some shifts because God is guiding us along the way. And, some, and, and, and guess what? If you don't make the shifts, God's going to make them for you, just like he did with Israel. You, when he sent the Assyrians and he sent Babylon, if you don't make the shift, if you don't get yourself together, he'll do it for you. That's why he's Jehovah. That's why he guides us along the way. Um, so what you worship other than God will not last. What you think uh, will make you rich, it might for a minute, but it will not last. I, I, I've had times in my own life, I didn't worship other things, but I didn't put God first, okay? I, I, ain't, I didn't worship these things, but I, I put God on a back burner. And the Holy Spirit said, what you doing? You get yourself together. I kept on, kept on. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You know how we do. I'm grown. You can't tell me what to do. And uh, <laughs> he guided me on back to where I needed to be through affliction. He did that. Amen. We have a con. Go ahead, sister. We have a comment. Yeah. Um, touching on what you just said, uh, Sister Miles, mm -hmm. is that if we don't, if if we don't turn around and repent mm. from our disobedience, mm. Mm. and we'll let God have to turn us around, woe unto us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because when God turns us around, we turn around. <laughs> you know, because we can we we can, <laughs> we can we can say I, I have repented. But see, God know if you have That's repented right. truly yeah. of that right. thing. Mm -hmm. Truly, he mm -hmm. know if you have repented. That's right. That's and when right. we, put, we put anything mm. in this world, in our lives, before Boy. God, then that thing becomes an idol. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. more we mm -hmm. put it before mm -hmm. God, 
the easy it is to put before God. Mm-hmm. So we, mm-hmm. like you said earlier, yeah. we got to put ourselves in check. That's right. We got to examine ourselves mm-hmm. on a daily mm-hmm. basis mm-hmm. where I'm going. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I, I read this article where this lady, um, she's a Christian, mm-hmm. and she said that she does a self-evaluation every month of where she is in Christ, mm-hmm. where she is, or uh, uh, where she has come from, what improvements that she have made in her life and the relationship mm-hmm. that she has with the Lord. Mm-hmm. She does a self-evaluation, and it behooves us to mm. do that as well mm. on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Check ourselves. Amen. Check our Amen. spiritual levels, Amen. our growth. Amen. Are we in tune with where God mm-hmm. wants us to be? Mm-hmm. Are we on the right path? Mm-hmm. Are we allowing God on, to continue to guide <laughs> us? in the way that he will want us to go because if we let that's right he will god promised to guide god promised to guide us if we would just hear and follow his word amen amen verse six from now on i will tell you of new things of hidden things unknown to you they are created now and long ago you have not heard of them before today so you cannot say yes i knew them you have never heard or understand from your old ears. God is saying here, I don't know, this is just what I believe, I, that you don't know what I'm going to do. I know you said, I know I said through the prophets that I would do this and do that. But sometimes I'll do something that you can't even fathom. You, you... <laughs> I can't even, it'll blow your mind. I, I can't even phantom what God would do. I mean, even for him to use my enemies to take me down, you know, and then turn around and take them down for what they did to me. That's mind-boggling to me. <laughs> God, you, that's mind-boggling to me, how he could use my enemies, and then when you mess with my people, guess what, I'm coming to get you. It's mind-boggling what God will do for us because he loves us so much. But he will discipline those he loves. The scripture is clear on that. God disciplines those he loves. And when you get too far out there and you belong to him, he will discipline you. He will discipline you for you to come on back to where you belong. Amen? Amen. Any comments on that, concerns? God doesn't want you to think that you know everything about him. He's sovereign. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Amen. Ephesians 1, 9, and 11 says, Ephesians 1, 9, and 11. Okay. Heaven made known unto us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. In whom also... We have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who work of all things after the counsel of his own will. God is control of our lives. Amen. God is in control of our lives. I know we think we're in control, but we're not. If we belong to God, hmm, he controls our lives. He knows the plans that he has for us. And if you veer off to the left or to the right, he's going to put you back on the right path. The steps of the Lord are ordered by God. Amen. I think that's the scripture. All right, let's, let's, let's move on because I don't have much time. All right. Second outline, the living God. The living God. Did I finish? The living God. The living God. Go back to 6, 7, and 8. I, I want to... Um, Talk about how God has already prepared the people for him to hear his word. When he brought them out of Egypt, he gave them some clear instructions. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, he gave very clear instructions about what to do with the family and how to teach the word to their family. And So guess what? They couldn't say, I don't know that God, but we got to continue to tell the story. <laughs> The way it was taught to us. we got to bring our kids and continue to tell the same story that was taught to us. Not a gospel that's watered down and and we accept this and that. No. We've got to stay with the word of God. Amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 
6, 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them when you sit down at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols around your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the poor, on the doorpost of your home and on your gate. Look at that. Mike, please. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. And, and, and if we don't walk before the people but like that, then they won't see God in the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are to continue to flavor the earth with God's spirit. Uh, and impress upon the people who God is. Amen. I'm not, I'm not up here to preach. Amen. Verse 17. This, the living God, is the second outline. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy God of Israel, I am the Lord their God who teaches you what is best for you, hmm. who directs you in the way you should go. I know everybody, God directs us. God guides us. I know we know the scripture from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. I don't have that. Um, Trust in the Lord with thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Proverbs 3, I'm sorry, 6, 5 and 6. God is our redeemer. God is our protector. God brought us back out of the darkness into the marvelous light. My favorite scripture is, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What has God saved you from? Job says, My redeemer lives in all the troubles that Job faced in life. He still believed that God loved him and God was going to come and save him out of the troubles that he was in. I just come to tell you today that God is waiting on us to change our lives, to come back to him. And if we don't do it on our own will, he will do it for us. He is the God that promises to guide us when we veer off in the wrong direction. We've all had those, those times when we black slid, as they called, old folks called it. And we were not walking according to the word of God. And I know in my life, it was God that brought me back. Um, it was the Holy Spirit that nudged me and said, hey, you know, you shouldn't be living like this. And uh, you were not taught this. And um, so that's the God that we serve. That's, that's the great I am, the, the great I am, the, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the, the breath of life, the the the, the he is the one, that the great shepherd. He is the one that loves us beyond measure. Um, I could go on and on and on about this lesson. <laughs> um, because I, I was happy because God will redeem us and set us free. But I was also saddened in that we continue to disobey God. 
Because we serve a God that loves us, and he comes to see about us like the old folks used to say. He's not going to leave you where you are, but I, it's time for us to get our stuff together. God promised to guide us. Amen. Amen. I hope you have gotten something out of the lesson on today. I hope that the word of God has encouraged you to look at yourself. And if there are some changes that need to be made, that we will not only hear but listen to what God tells us to do and apply it to our lives. Amen. Sister Clark is coming up next. Amen, Minister Miles. Amen. Amen to that. God promised to guide us, and he will guide us. Uh, I hope that you out there in uh, Cyber Sanctuary, Facebook, YouTube, receive something from this lesson. Send them some hearts and some likes and some uh, 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 emojis that you enjoyed the lesson and you received from the lesson. Because God is our perfect guide. He will guide us through the storm that we are that we're going through. You know, anytime that we're in situations that we have been brought to, because if we're going through it, God brought us to it. And he's going to bring us out of it through his guidance. That remember that God is a God. He is our ultimate shepherd. Pastor uh, Raven is our visible shepherd who guides us in the spirit of God's word. But God will guide us through our entire life. Anything that we're going through, you're going to have surgery this morning or this, this week, this month. God is going to guide you through that, that surgery. Just call on him and see won't he guide you through any situation that you may be going on. He promised this, and when God promised promise us anything it is true it is yes and it is conditional all we got to do is believe all we have to do is believe amen and the doors of the church are open amen come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus right now amen we see that there's none but yet there's still room in the house of God Amen. We're going to take, take up our offering at this time. And we have three ways to give. Uh, we have uh, cash out, dollar sign, Mount Calvary, Herman Street. And we have Giveify, Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Nashville, Tennessee. And we have the mail-in. If you choose to mail in your offering and uh, whatever that you would like to uh, bless the house of the Lord with, 2448, Pastor Percy J. Clark's Way. Amen. Amen. This now concludes our Sunday school hour. And we thank you again for tuning in. And at this time, we're going to close out our Sunday school with our motto. Our Sunday school must go. Our Sunday school must glow. Our Sunday school must grow. And I should be the one to help this so. Amen.